First, start by removing any input and output modules from the back of your deck. This can be done by pulling the cam arm at the bottom of the output module until it is perpendicular to the jack panel, and then pulling the output or input module out of the deck. Then we're going to flip the deck over and using a 3 16 hex driver, remove the four screws located on the bottom of the unit. Once you have these four screws removed, gently lift up on the cover from the back of the unit and reach under the right hand side and remove the control cable connecting the front display to the motherboard. Once you have the cover removed, go ahead and set the subassembly aside. Now you can remove the display cable completely from the unit, undo the RS-232 cable and put it off to the side. Using a 764 Allen driver, go ahead and undo the screws holding the display in place. These are nylon screws, so be careful and be a little gentle when removing them. Once you start them with the screwdriver, you should be able to take them out by hand. It's not necessary to fully remove these screws. You can undo them until they're just barely holding in and then you'll be able to remove the display. The front display board should come out fairly simply. Simply pull it away from the front and you may need to use a pair of tweezers to hold the display mask in its socket while removing the display. Once you feel the display is completely released, gently pull up on it and out of the front of the product. If necessary, you can remove or change buttons simply by using a pair of tweezers and sliding it out of the back of the display. If necessary, you can remove the display material. The stack up consists of one glass display unit with tint, a diffusion layer, followed by the mask. When rebuilding your display, simply put the display stack back into the display pocket. Be sure that the large hole on the left hand side of the mask is to the left hand side of the deck where the knob can be seen. That's for the IR sensor on the display board itself. Now, simply holding the mask in place, you can slide the display back into place and hold it firmly against the front until you tighten the screws you can now gently tighten the screws by hand until they touch the board. You know the display will be installed correctly when the pinholes line up with the cutouts on the side of the display mask. Then 
Then using a 764 driver, go ahead and tighten them about an eighth to a quarter turn until you get tension on the back of the display. Tightening the button screws is a little bit more tricky. Go ahead and tighten these until they make contact with the board. Once they make contact, you'll need to firmly tighten them as you check the button for any bounce or inconsistent click. You don't want to tighten them so much that the button doesn't move or doesn't click anymore, but you do want to tighten them enough to where you don't get any rattle or bounce out of the button. At this point, check your buttons to make sure they're working and clicking correctly, and also turn your knob and listen to see if it's scraping or dragging at all on the IR sensors. If this needs to be adjusted, make the necessary adjustments now. Reconnect your RS-232 cable and reinstall your control cable as shown. Next, we're gonna work on the subassembly by starting to remove the DAC modules. Use a 330 seconds hex driver to remove the brace over the top of the modules. Now you can remove the DAC modules. When removing the DAC modules, make sure that they are reinstalled in the same order that they were taken out. Each module should go back into the associated slot that they were pulled from. The slot numbers can be found on the left-hand side of the board underneath each module. Now you can remove the clock using a 764 hex driver. You don't have to remove the screw all the way, just simply lift it about a quarter of an inch and then you should be able to remove the module. Now using a number one Phillips driver, remove the four motherboard screws. Using the same number one Phillips driver, remove the 10 screws holding down each of the module connectors at the back of the motherboard. Now using a 330 seconds Allen driver, remove the six device screws along the front edge of the board.
Each one of these screws has a lock washer on it, and sometimes they don't come out with the screw. Be sure to use tweezers to remove each lock washer if it stays behind. Now, unplug the power connections along the front edge and the left edge of the board. The front edge has a 2-pin, a 4-pin, and a 3-pin. The left edge has a 3-pin and a 2-pin. Once these are disconnected, you can use a quarter-inch socket driver to undo the two standoffs for the DAC modules and the one standoff for the clock. Once these are removed, you can remove your motherboard. Reinstalling your new motherboard, be sure to apply thermal grease to each of the regulators underneath the board and the two small chipsets over on the right hand side. Once you have thermal grease installed, go ahead and spread it around using a Q-tip or other soft device. It's important to not have too much, but also not have too little. Once you have the thermal paste applied, go ahead and flip your board over and align it with the screw holes in your base metal. I like to use two screw holes on the left hand side of the board to find the perfect alignment. Once you have the board set on your base metal, go ahead and use your quarter inch standoffs and locate where the motherboard should be. Once you have these in place, tighten them down with a quarter inch driver and reattach your power connections to the motherboard. Now using a number one Phillips, replace the four board screws Using that same number one Phillips, replace the 10 screws on the connectors along the back edge of the motherboard. Now reinstall the six device screws that you took out earlier. This can be done either one of two ways. 
The first way I demonstrate is by dropping the locker ring on top of the regulator before putting in the device screw. The second way is by putting the lock ring on the device screw and then installing the device screw while holding the lock ring in place, ensuring that it doesn't fall below the motherboard. Next, install your clock by clicking it onto the connector firmly and then tightening down the 764th hex that's in the corner of it. Now reinstall your DAC modules in the order that they were removed. Now secure your DAC modules in place using the DAC clamp you removed earlier. Put this in with the serrations down and make sure that each of the DAC modules falls into a slot on the DAC module clamp. Reinstall the 332nd Allen screws that you removed. Now that you've reassembled your subassembly, you can put it back into the cover. Simply line up the subassembly with the cover along the front edge of the product. Slowly lower the subassembly down, being sure to reconnect the control cable on the right hand side of the product. Now using your 3 16 hex driver, reinstall the four cover screws in the bottom of the unit. Once these cover screws have been installed, flip your unit back over and reinstall the DAC modules in the order that they were removed. 